Daily Mail headline, Gerrard's on the precipice. Um, and it just speaks to the pressure that Steven Gerrard is under at the moment. There's an interesting stat that since Gerrard was appointed by Villa um, last November, um, he's now managed 33 games. He's won 12 of them and drawn eight of them and lost 16. 1.2 points per game, which is not great. And we know about the investment from Aston Villa. They've got ambitions to be challenging in the top half of the Premier League and hopefully from their point of view maybe even roughing the feathers of the top six and it's just not gone that way for Villa this season they're six, six, uh, 16th from the table um, just nine points this season um, and only Wolves have scored fewer goals than them in the Premier League and we we know about Wolves struggles in terms of putting the ball in the back of the net so it's not looking good for Steven Gerrard at mm. Aston Villa and obviously Villa fans were a little bit taken aback when they sacked Dean Smith but Gerrard's record since taking over has not been much better than Smith. No. Um, I think they should take a leaf out of Arsenal's book, Villa, mm. and hang in there a bit. And I hope the Villa faithful do because it's been a little bit unfortunate. Leon Bailey had a bad injury last year. Kamara this year. Diago Car uh, Carlos has come yeah. in. Bad Huge injury. They have three big players, all big signings for the football club. Um, I'd like to think he'd turn it round. I just think it's a tad too early. And look, it, it has been a difficult watch, to be honest, the Villa um, this season, most definitely. Um, so I I just hope they go, they just give that a little bit more time for Gerard to try and turn things around. Um, it's, a, it's a tough one. I know that for Villa fans. It's difficult. I feel like they're in that, I don't know, it's, they're in the limbo a little bit in terms of their expectations match with reality. We know how good the Premier League mm. is in terms of the top six. And then there's teams outside that that are really chomping at the bit. And so when Villa made these investments, they were probably expecting to be in and around it, but it's difficult. We see a team like Crystal Palace this season who are lauded for the way they play, they play football. But again, they're only yeah. 15th in the league. It's a very, very difficult Premier League. Well, I'll just ask I'll ask the pair of you this one. Would you have, after what you saw of Coutinho and you had him on loan, would you have made that permanent? No. No, I wouldn't have. I was surprised. I didn't would think he did done, much. Would oh, you have done, Quico? I would have. I would okay. have. I thought, I thought it made a statement. It wasn't necessarily what he brought on the pitch, but the fact that he's this player that's got such a great reputation would probably stand Villa a good stead in terms of attracting top talents going forward. Mm. But that's because I thought Villa would be challenging for European places this season. And obviously looking at it now, he's not managed to get the best out of Coutinho. And I think that's a, a huge blot on his mark as well. Yeah. I think that's the biggest issue. There's a lot of players in that Villa team that well, are not... You know, up. terrific footballer. Yeah. Not done enough. I mean, Ollie Watkins' exactly. form this year is, you know, lost his place really in the England squad. Yeah. You know, so it's yeah. a tough it's one. It's not clicking at the moment at Aston Villa, who take on a, a resurgent Chelsea tomorrow. <laughs> hey, yeah. um, talking of resurgent, Gary O'Neill's doing great business <laughs> at Bournemouth. Incredible job at Bournemouth is a big, big surprise because I think a lot of people would have tipped Bournemouth to go down. Um, they're currently sitting ninth in the Premier League at the moment. Uh, in the Daily Telegraph, uh, the headline is O'Neill makes a miracle start at Bournemouth by Sam Wallace. And it has been a miracle start. When Bournemouth were on the end of a hiding against uh, against Liverpool, Liverpool losing 9-0. I know, I know, I know. When <laughs> Liverpool... The funny thing is, it gives me the shivers. I was telling you about it before yes. we came on air. Oh, because funny. We're, we're talking about my dad when when I was naughty, when I was little. <laughs> uh, rather than, he was strict in that, but he'd always say, I'll give you a good hiding if you don't behave. And I didn't understand what that meant. Yeah. I thought it meant he'd hide me away. <laughs> Oh, no. So it did, it worked, because yeah. I was always like, OK, Daddy, I'll be good. So it's youth. funny when you keep saying, gives me a shiver. <laughs> <laughs> OK, they were battered by Liverpool. 9-0, <laughs> um, and obviously that cost Scott Parker his job. Yeah. Since Gary O'Neill's taken over, they're unbeaten in five games. They've won two, they've drawn three. They're hard to beat. Mm. Um, and yeah, it's looking onwards and upwards. Like I say, they're sitting ninth in the, in the Premier League. And he's just steadied the ship, really. Um, obviously, Bournemouth, like I said, were a lot of people's favourites to go down. Uh, but they've got a game against Fulham today, another newly promoted mm. side. And I'm actually backing Bournemouth in this one to go to Craven Cottage and get a result, whether that be a draw or a win. Um, I've been impressed with what I've seen so far since Gary Neal's taken over. Yeah, I don't think anyone would disagree with that. I think a lot of Bournemouth uh, fans will be totally surprised of how it's panned out after yeah. that Liverpool defeat. Game Day Breakfast with Natalie Sawyer and Tony Cascarino. Saturday mornings from 6 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.